indices abound that Nigeria is indeed undergoing trying times. The preponderance of opinions by concerned elder statesmen, many expressed through letters addressed to the presidency, attest to the current predicament of the most populous black nation in the world. Undoubtedly, peace is a sine qua non for stability, but peace is now a luxury for many Nigerians. Many can no longer sleep with both eyes closed for fear of bandits and criminals lurking in the corner. Traveling by road has become a nightmare in daytime for many. Cries of restructuring and true federalism of federalism fill public discourse. Religion and politics seem, unfortunately, to be fueling the divisive tendencies rather than helping to provide a point of convergence. Welcome to Standpoint. I'm Ibrahim Shita. I'll be discussing the state of the nation with special focus on fostering national uni unity with members of the Unity Project. Uh, I have Jennifer Serrano. She is the convener of the Unity Project Nigeria. And Aqua Owo Ime is the coordinator of Unity Project Nigeria. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on Standpoint. Thank you for having us. Events that have played out during the previous general election, uh, talking about the 2015 election, even the 2019 election, a lot of people have been calling for several, you know, as reason, uh, so much talks about what is wrong with this nation, telling us that there, uh, there are threats here and there. Now, what would you say about the, the recent calls for restructuring and also that of the Biafra agitation? Where did we miss it in this country? Hmm. I, I can't really say where we missed it, but I would say that from public opinion, which I sampled, uh, we, we did a survey over two months and we find out that the idea of nationalism or what it means to be Nigerian is ideally missing uh, in our people. Right. And we don't really see Nigeria as a nation. We just refer to ourselves in terms of ethnic groups. Um, that's how you find people introduce themselves. I'm Yoruba, I'm Edo, I'm Hausa, I'm Fulani. Hardly would you ever see someone come out right and say, I am Nigerian. No, but because, probably because you're asking the question on the soil in Nigeria. No, I, actually not. Even when you're outside and you ask uh, people, they rather identify with the ethnic groups rather than the nation. So the national identity is missing. Um, so we find people agitating for different things. Right. Um, we hear people saying, oh, the Dua group should go, uh, the Biafra should go, there's Fulani Nation. Um, I, I believe that in the inception, when this nation was formed, um, there was never a really a real sit down together of the people, as it were, to right. say, okay, we're here and we're going to decide our terms of being here and how we're going to coexist being here. I think that's missing. And then over the years, with all the things that's happened, there's been more polarization more than ever, and people are feeling that being uh, disintegrated or, or separated is the solution, but I don't believe that's the solution. Okay, so we started by asking questions concerning the restructuring of regionalism and all that. Restructuring, even as a word, is not new to the press any longer. But how sacrosanct is the unity of Nigeria? I'll say that Nigeria being a country is like a family. There could be dispute, there could be disagreement, right. but that doesn't mean we are no longer a family. Mm -hmm. We need to settle it. There's a, a phrase and a term I initiate or Jennifer always use, and I like the way she puts it. We're not going to impose unity on people, but we are going to renegotiate really our unity. That means I'm going to have a say. Are you going to have a say? But we are a country, we are a family, we stick together. Are you saying that we don't have a say as it stands because we have the National Assembly where we have everyone who represents each and every constituency in the, from the part of the country. But are they satisfied? If you go back to 2014 where the CONFA was held, there were certain uh, recommendations that were made. Have those recommendations been implemented? Several people came from different ethnic groups in Nigeria to come together to say what they want in the country, to feel that they belong here. But have those things been implemented? That's a question we need to ask. And sometimes I think we're also measuring more on what divides us. Rather, there are also things that unite us more. If you listen to Nigerian music, you don't care whether it's coming from a Yoruba right. or it's coming from an Igbo person, per se, you know, but you, you love it nonetheless. And that's, that's Nigeria, that's the spirit of Nigeria, and that's what we seek to promote via the Unity Project Nigeria. Now, allow me to interject. You said uh, we have people, the political class. When we sample public opinion, we find out that there's a disjoint between the average Nigerian and the political class. You hear phrases like, oh, it is their Nigeria, it is their government. Absolutely. So the people do not feel represented 
that, oh, these people are there to represent them. For example, when I went to um, the East and they were complaining about Buhari, and I said, is Buhari your governor? Is Buhari responsible for your roads? Is Buhari responsible for paying your staff salaries? It's your governor who is responsible for that. Absolutely. And they say, oh, don't mind him. He's one of them. <laughs> so they feel that the political class is separate from the people. And this is part of what we're trying to bring together so that everybody can see that this Nigeria belongs to us all, not yeah. to some of let, them let, somewhere. Let, 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 let's table these facts. You know, sometimes people find it very interesting when they talk about national issues rather than issues that are happening around them. If you want, people want, people are so much interested in what is happening in Abuja rather than what is happening in the locality. Yeah. What yeah. do you think is responsible for that? Um, I have to say, I, uh, at the risk of, of being crucified, uh, I would say I find that as a people we're a bit hypocritical. And I said this, uh, a few months ago, there were some things all over the social media and people were standing with a particular <clears throat> person. And I said, there are issues, there are issues that are closer to home. We're not standing with things that are relevant to us. There are issues on the daily that affects you and I, policies that affect you and I, things that affect us and our future generations. But the average Nigerian, fails to pay attention to that. I feel that a lot has been missing in our education sector. A lot has been missing in the way we have been raised as a people. And some people just sit back and point fingers and complain, which is on the backdrop of why we started this. I do not believe in sitting down and complaining and say, oh, it is them, or it is their responsibility. Who is them? Who are they? It is all of us. The responsibility to make Nigeria habitable, peaceful, depends on all of us, myself included. And I asked people, I said, we say, oh, the British did this. Oh, they put us together. Oh, it's Buhari's fault. It's this person's fault. Oh, it's Ashiwaju's fault. But you as a person, in your capacity, what have you done to mediate, to rescue the situation? All right, let me come to you, uh, Ime. Uh, <coughs> it is also said that um, this is a country where, I mean, the current administration has made it point blank that we are standing against corru corruption because if you want to associate a country uh, with, any, with underdevelopment, it has to be a country that also has features of corruption. And this administration has been saying, we are stamping out corruption whether we like it or not. But then people have also been accused individually. They say we are also corrupt. How do you react to that? We are not all corrupt. Abroad, you have people shooting. No, for instance, does that make, if, does that if, make if, all Americans if, if you're finding way, if you're mm -hmm. if you're making making out way for your child, who is supposed to sit for an examination mm -hmm. and then not? It not, starts not, not from the family. It. it starts from the home. That's what she's saying. It's not it's not them. It is us. When we, when we are blaming the government officials, we talk as if they are aliens. They're not aliens. They came from among the people. When you are a representative of the society. people. So, so it is us, the okay, family. Can we, can we take it one of time? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I just have to go there. Because right, I, I yeah. want to say this, that people say, oh, some people are corrupt. I say, for example, I have an appointment to see a GM of a company. And I get there, the gatesman stops me. He stops me because I refuse to give him a bribe. But that's and corruption. unless I'm ready to bribe him and placate him, I will miss my appointment. So is that Buhari's fault? Uh, corruption is a problem. It is a Nigerian problem. It is a worldwide problem without a doubt. I feel that a lot is missing in us as a people. A lot has not been communicated to us. We haven't got a value system enough to, to appreciate what is right and what is wrong and doing the right okay. thing without asking for encouragement. I'm going to cut in now, right? So take it back to you. So he said, uh, she's uh, already said that uh, we, we, we are also responsible we are, for, for we our are, quagmire. Absolutely. So how exactly do you think we can, we can tackle this and you know, expunge that feature of corruption in, uh, from our own the selves? Change, the change starts with us. You know, I remember back then growing up in school, the certain cultures and virtue that were imbibed in us. For instance, you had things like pick up litters, don't litter the environment. Oh, the sign I don't see that again. Right. Those little things culture their minds in a certain way. Now, bring it back to the families. If, if, if someone comes to look for the, for the parent, mm -hmm. and then the, the child innocently comes and says, Mommy, uncle looking for you. And oh, Mommy did not want to see the uncle. He's angry. When uncle goes, he says, Why did you tell uncle I was around? Mm -hmm. Next time, that child will learn to lie. Corruption has started. The child starts stealing from the house. From stealing at the house, assuming that child grows up to become a governor. Is a higher level of stealing. He grows up to become a senator. A higher level of stealing. Grows, grows up to become a president. A higher level of stealing. So it starts from home. It starts from the schools. Some of this is not being inculcated into the academic system where the children are taught to tell the truth, taught the right things, taught the right values in the family and in the schools. And that's how they will grow. 
and that's how we have a society. It's not going to be solved in one term of a government. Okay, you, 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 you've reasoned. I'll, I'll come to you because we need to also look at also other dimension to, I wanted to what is happening. To that. Definitely, you're still going to come back to that. But then the need for you know national integration and national building, uh, nation building rather, among Nigerians led to the establishment of something like uh, Unity Schools. We have the NYC and also the National Orientation Agency back in the day. But then we seem to be more divided than ever. Everyone wants to claim where he or she has come from, just like you said a little earlier on. So why do you think, or what exactly do you think is responsible for that exact division? And how can we uh, form a cohesion to be one Nigeria? Okay, first of all, why that happened, I'm not sure. I don't think I have all the answers. But what we are looking towards, um, I'm not really looking at the why, because there are many people who are historians who are older than me, who've been in Nigeria longer than me, who have... Yeah, but for answers. you to propose solutions, but you need to know where we're coming from. We, we've looked at the problem. What is the problem? Why do we feel uh, we'd rather associate with people of our ethnic group rather than our nation? That's why we have such programs that we put in place. Part of our programs is a school program where we intend to go to all secondary schools, primary schools, and possibly high institutions across the nation. And we're trying to bring in this, what is the Nigerian culture? And like he, he said, part of what we grew up with, the things we grew up with, such as to do the right thing. If you found something that didn't belong to you, yeah. you should return it. Yeah. You should tell the truth. You should be punctual. You should study to pass your exams, not pay to pass your exams. So those are the little things that we missed out. Somehow we have dropped those values along the way. It's not being reiterated to us and we have forgotten. So we're looking at starting from the next generation, which are the future of Nigeria. Right. We're looking at our children right. to communicate that to them right. as to this is what is right. This is what is wrong. This is what is acceptable. No, no, no. You, you are taking it. Okay, you're saying let us start with it from the root. But then what is happening currently at the moment? For instance, if you talk about the... Uh, the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, you know, they've placed bounty on the heads of, uh, mm -hmm. heads of uh, public officials in Nigeria. Wherever we see them, we arrest them. When you see Buhari, for instance, <laughs> he's an impostor, according to their own words. How do we exactly represent ourselves? Tell the entire world that we are not what, we, what you think we are. Okay, part of that is the education. It's part of what we're trying to do with the Unity Project. Uh, it's, we call it the Unity Project because it's a series of events. We have the Unity Tour. So all these things we're saying we're taking around. We have the Unity Festival. We have also the dinner, which is the talks as well. Uh, what are we doing? We're introducing uh, any groups to each other. So it's sort of like I meet you and you meet us and you get to interact with us and we understand. For me, what I understand, for example, with the Biafra people, is when I went there and they complained, they laid all kinds of complaints, oh, we have no food, oh, we have no this, oh, we have no that. They're pointing fingers, right. but they fail to look inwards. I went to a village in Imo State, and I recall a, a little example, and they said, I asked if there was yam, and they said, oh, we're waiting for the yam to be brought in by the, the northerners. And then they said, oh, the yam's very expensive. But you think, you have land, you're in the village. Why can't you farm? Why are you waiting for somebody from somewhere to bring you yam? And then you complain you have no money okay. when you're sitting we, we, on resources. We, we are, we are so it's for... all of those kinds of education that we need to bring in. Right. People need to look inward as to what the problems are, what the solutions are inwardly, and stop pointing fingers. Right. We, we, we are due for a, a, a break now. But then before we go on our break, I want to quick, you to quickly respond to that. Um, they say the amalgamation of this country truly is what is described as a marriage of inconvenience. Is that, is that a fact to you, just in a, in a moment? I don't think so. I think we are stronger together than without being together. Nigeria is better off together. Now, when you say you want to go this way, what is really going to change? You say you want to go with your oil, and this one say I'm going to go with my farm produce. Is that the Nigeria you want, us, you want to create? Okay, I'm going to be okay here with my own family, with my own ethnic group, and those other people are not going to be okay. Have you thought about the security challenges that will arise because of that? Are they just going to fold their hands if they don't have something to eat? They're going to look for where there's food. And guess where? Where you are. And they're going to come for you. So we have issues quite all right. right. But we have to renegotiate our unity. We have to come to the table and talk. Maybe I should quickly bring this to you. Okay, you, you're going to bring that. Uh, all uh, right. Uh, uh, immediately we go on this no break. Problem. We go on a break now and then we talk about how exactly we can form a cohesion in the country called Nigeria. We'll be back.
You're watching Standpoint, and I've been discussing with Jennifer Serrano. Uh, she's a convener the Unity Project, Nigeria, and also Aqua Oime is also a project coordinator, the Unity Project, Nigeria. Uh, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for spending time with us on the program. Our pleasure. Uh, well, uh, recently we we've heard a series of you know complaints from people. A lot of people say religion, politics, and you also mentioned ethnic divides and so on and so forth have been responsible for our disunity in this country. Is it that, do, are we saying, or are they in one way saying that we should expunge the concept of religion, politics, or what exactly do you think, what meaning can you put to this? Um, from time memorial, uh, religion has always been a great divider of the people. You know, there's been jihads, holy wars, Christians, Muslims, Roman Catholics had their own own season. We're looking at, we're not saying expunging, because you can't stop people from worshipping God, whatever God they choose, that actually will be violating their human rights. We're looking at a way where we can understand. It's about cultural education, religious education. A lot of prejudice that we face in this country is because people don't have the information. They believe propaganda. A lot of things are going out on social media. A lot of things are coming out and, and they're not necessarily true. Like you, I heard a news, somebody said, called me and said, oh, in Lagos we had all the northerners are killing uh, Yoruba people. I said, well, I, I'm in Lagos. I didn't see anything mm -hmm. of the sort. So we're looking at this, this sort of all these sort of lies have been perpetuated. We've heard lies about the Fulani people. We've heard lies about the Yoruba people. We've heard lies about the Igbo people. How do we, do we clear this up? I believe that the only solution is knowledge. The knowledge, if I know you, for example, somebody could have told me you have two, two horns on your head. Okay, you, so, you just made a point. So knowledge. Let, knowledge. Let me take it. Let me take it to him because knowledge, the interaction and the knowledge right. bringing people together. Right. We, we we ended on a particular note before we went on that break, but I would like to I would like you to continue on that note by, while reacting to what a senior advocate of Nigeria, Feb Babala, said. He said, as a matter of fact, many have said that the 1999 Constitution is, in large measure responsible for problems we are uh, facing currently today. Uh, well, the, the Constitution has discouraged and crippled developments in the state. That's a senior advocate talking there. Do you agree on that note, that the Constitution is the, is the problem that we have? I agree that we could have a problem with the Constitution, but I don't like the approach that some are taking. How like do you mean the, the approach? Now, the, the, the IPO, for instance, now they're saying they're fighting and beating up their representative outside the country. That's, that's not the approach I suggest. That's not the approach we embrace. It's not patriotic. It's not patriotic. That's not who we are. Now, I wanted to say something, and like, like rightly said, my mentor had an interview with one of the former presidents of this nation. And walking through his library, saw some things and asked him, what goes through your mind when you see this? This was supposed to be like trophy-like stuff from the war. You were thinking he was going to say, oh, our victory reminds me of my victory. But it was striking what he said. He said the futility of war. The futility of war. And he asked him, why say that? He said, because at the end of the war, we still come back to talk. So I'm saying, why don't we brave up and start talking now? Let's renegotiate our, our unity. You're beating them outside the country. Now, one of them said he's traveling out to Geneva and he's not afraid of being beaten, that he knows what it's called self-defense. What do you take out of that? That means he may harm someone to defend himself. Is that what we want? Must the blood of Nigerians be shed before we come together? Yes, you're clamoring that people died for a particular, say, uh, for a, for a, at a particular time during the war. But hey, people also died to give us this country, Nigeria. A phrase in the National Anthem said that the labors of our heroes shall not be in vain. If you're going okay, down this road, it, it is, it's definitely going to be in vain. It is very and we don't essential. want that. It is very essential, very, well, let me say very important that we tackle the issue of, um, you know, Ambarditary kidnapping, yeah. you know, terrorism, and so on and so forth, because these also are ravaging this country. But I would say it's not a religious issue, it's exactly. not an ethnic issue. Banditry, kidnapping, terrorism have been there and they will probably still be there. But when we start fighting each other, we'll never find a solution to yeah. it. There are security issues quite all right. We need to come together as a people. And I believe that we have enough people in Nigeria. We, are, we have enough wealthy people in Nigeria. If the federal government can't support the military enough, we have enough within ourselves to make this happen. So this is our standpoint that there are problems, but you going out and beating your leaders, how do you think the, the outside world looks at us? How do you think the international okay, community okay. views us as people? Right. Then we come out as savage barbarians, well, as you're which we are not As, as you're responding, you, you're, you're also profiling solution, which I'll, I'll take to him. So 
uh, seen all of these dangerous positions, you know, Nigeria has found itself now. What exactly would you recommend as being the way forward? Oh, like the, the, the Unity Project, we are doing something. We are going back to the grassroots. We're going back to the school. We have a going back to school project that we're going to talk to the people in school. In the schools, you have different tribes, different ethnic groups there. And we want to catch them young and instill these virtues to them. Someone must be there talking to them. And let me just state this for a fact. We don't belong to any political party. We are not paid by APC. We are not paid by PDP. We are not paid by any party to do this. We are Nigerians that care about Nigeria, that love Nigeria. And this, this going back to school to deal with the, the student in school is our initiative. And I'm thinking any well-meaning Nigeria should buy into this, to sponsor this, to come into this right. and support this work. Right. You, this is the way forward forward. Right. In just 30 seconds, what would you like to say as we wrap up? Okay, we have the Unity Festival. We begin on the 1st of October 2019, which is the day that Nigeria came together. What we're trying to do, we're trying to celebrate Nigeria, not in the way the colonial masters handed down, but in the way that represents our people in all our beauty, in all our glory, uh, which will be happening at uh, Victoria Island, uh, Murakwala right, Park on right, the 1st of October. Right, right. And we'd like Nigerians to come out and join us. This is an event for everybody. It's a free entry okay. event. As long as you're Nigerian and you're well-meaning and okay. a love of Nigeria, you are welcome there. Yeah. We have so much that we want to do for Nigeria, and we're calling out to Nigerians everywhere to support our cause. Thank okay. you. Right, thank you very much. Um, uh, I've been speaking with uh, Convena, uh, the Unity Project Nigeria, Jennifer Serrano as well as um, Aqua O Ime, is a project coordinator, the Unity Project Nigeria. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you've been watching Standpoint. You can also watch the program again at 7.30 p.m. tonight and also 7.30 a.m. tomorrow. My name is Ibrahim Shita. Thank you so much. Bye now.